I want to say from the outset that often the work of the state auditor in this administration is grim, and this is an example of which. I have, uh, as chief of staff and the former director of Homeland Security, I've worked with many of the targets of this examination and have been there as they distinguished themselves and the important work of making sure that Kentucky was able to respond to the myriad of natural disasters that we seem to have been faced with over the years. But I want to point out that being good at your job is not licensed to permit a system in which taxpayer resources are abused. Uh, this effort was so important that I put it in the able hands of my deputy, Libby Carlin, the assistant state auditor. Uh, certainly she'll be available for any, uh, any follow-up we have with complex questions that may arise from the area of government accountability and accounting. Uh, in March, my office launched a special examination of the Kentucky Emergency Management Agency. This exam was prompted by red flags that had been raised by the agency's routine annual audits since 2007. Those annual audits identified nearly $5.6 million in questionable expenditures. We have also received numerous allegations about possible waste abuse and abuse at the agency, requiring our attention in the form of a special examination. Kentucky Emergency Management has a critical mission of preparing for and coordinating the Commonwealth's response to emergencies and disasters. It has a budget of more than $64 million, with almost 90% of that money com coming from federal programs such as FEMA and the Chemical Stockpile Emergency Preparedness Program, otherwise known as CSEP which provides emergency preparedness assistance to communities surrounding the Army's chemical war warfare stockpiles at the Bluegrass Army Depot in Richmond. The report I'm re releasing today contains a number of very serious findings. Among them, among them, employees were intimidated and threatened, documents were altered to hide disallowed expenditures, taxpayer dollars were used to pay for alcohol, entertainment, and door prizes at conferences, and procurement processes were ignored. This examination will be referred to the United States Department of Homeland Security, Kentucky, the Kentucky Attorney General, as well as the Kentucky Executive Branch Ethics Commission. The report paints a disturbing picture of an agency, of agency leadership that does not believe the rules apply to it. The findings raise concerns about waste and abuse that may have gone undetected therefore jeopardizing federal funds meant to prepare the Commonwealth for our emergencies. The agency has two missions, preparing for emergencies while effectively managing a public agency run on public resources. Although Kentucky Emergency Management has distinguished itself in response to a number of natural disasters, that does not excuse the lack of commitment to effective stewardship of taxpayer dollars. Current and former employees reported threats of retaliation and intimidation that not only created a hostile work environment, but also discouraged staff from identifying waste, fraud, and abuse. In addition, Kentucky Emergency Management has experienced significant employee turnover, which has affected the stability of the day-to-day -day operations of this critically important division. This atmosphere of intimidation, perpetuated by the Kentucky Emergency Management Administration is indeed alarming. Several employees reported being afraid to communicate with our auditors due to a belief that their phones or email were being tapped or observed, or in, even in person because they believed their phones and offices were bugged and their emails were being read. As auditors were wrapping up the exam, Kentucky Emergency Management employees informed them that the director had openly threatened retaliation upon learning who talked to my staff. This is unacceptable. This staff here in the auditor's office is the first, last, and frankly only line of defense the taxpayers and state employees have to ensure the effective stewardship of our tax dollars in Kentucky. And I will tolerate no administration that makes it more difficult for uh, their employees to openly and frankly converse with the taxpayer watchdog and his, and his representatives. Folks, I want to be very clear. Threatening retaliation against potential whistleblowers who cooperate with the auditor of public accounts is against the law, and as a result, I've referred this finding to the Attorney General. The report contains another very troubling finding. The documents were altered to conceal disallowed expenditures. Auditors found that invoices associated with expenditures at a conference were intentionally altered by 
Kentucky Emergency Management employees and or by the conference hotel at the, re at the, at the request of Kentucky Emergency Management to hide alcohol and other disallowed costs. The exam found expenditures associated with conferences hosted by Kentucky Emergency Management in 2010, 2011, and 2012 that did not appear reasonable or necessary. At least $103,000 in taxpayer money was spent on entertainment such as riverboat cruises, after-hour receptions, meals, alcohol, door prizes, and gifts. These expenses were not paid for directly by sponsors, as is typically the case with these types of government-hosted conferences. Kentucky Emergency Management collected fees from vendors and deposited them into the state treasury, commingling them with taxpayer dollars. Again, let me be clear, you cannot spend public money on booze and entertainment. But even if that were acceptable, the amount spent exceeded the fees paid by attendees and vendors which should be used to defray the cost of the conferences in general. In 2010, Kentucky Emergency Management spent more than $6,000 for pre-conference planning, plus another $12,000 for meals for dozens of attendees who had arrived early. Auditors also found $630 in valet charges and additional cost for rooms for employees who were not scheduled to work or speak at the event. In a state that has had its share of horrible natural, resource, natural disasters in recent years, wasting tax dollars intended for emergency response is inexcusable. Auditors found Kentucky Emergency Management lacked sufficient documentation to support the accuracy and reasonableness of conference expenditures. For example, Kentucky Emergency Management did not complete an attendee list, making it impossible for auditors to determine whether the cost of meals was indeed reasonable. The poor accounting of the conference calls into question whether it was an intentional act meant to conceal disallowed expenditures. The exam found the director received perks from the conference hotel that potentially influenced the selection of the conference location, and auditors found accounting standards for federal programs administered by Kentucky Emergency Management uh, were not followed, increasing the risk that unallowed charges could be incurred and not detected. This finding, while not as easy to illustrate as parties at the conference, is significant and will likely lead to additional findings when my office performs the annual 2013 financial statement audit at Kentucky Emergency Management. The exam found Kentucky Emergency Management spent $113,000 from 2009 to 2013 hosting working lunches at a Frankfurt hotel. The law is clear. In state government, working lunches are not permitted, period. Auditors found the Kentucky Emergency Management Director did not seek bids when procuring programming services from a software company with which he had had a long-time relationship. He did not follow state guidelines for using no bid contracts and did not consult with the Commonwealth Office of Technology as required. He flat out told my auditors that he just did not have time for all of that. As we have made clear, lengthiness and timeliness and inconvenience are not excuses for disregarding Kentucky procurement law. While we found no direct conflict of interest by the director with this programming firm, there is an appearance that the Kentucky Emergency Management Director's longtime relationship with the software vendor is not objective and decisions to circumvent procurement uh, processes raise red flags, ones that we will continue to monitor over the life of my tenure as the taxpayer watchdog. Folks, the job, not all agencies in state government are created equally, and certainly not many have uh, the same level of responsibility in critical times the Department of Emergency Management has. And while it's important to acknowledge the way that they have distinguished themselves in responding to many of those natural disasters, that distinguished record is not licensed uh, to disregard systems that must be in place to ensure uh, appropriate oversight of our taxpayer resources. I have said repeatedly in many di different circumstances that Kentucky is a poor state, and a poor state doesn't have the luxury of being dumb. Disregarding important taxpayer protections that are designed to make sure taxpayer dollars are allocated and resourced in a way that is to the best benefit of the taxpayer 
is critically important. And having a system of accountability and transparency to guarantee that kind of oversight is critical. And none of those cases, uh, and none of were those systems obeyed or applied in this very important agency. If anybody has any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Did anything criminal happen? Did anything criminal happen? Uh, we are making referrals to the uh, Attorney General's office. Uh, we are making referrals to the Ethics Commission to get to the heart of that question. Uh, I have uh, learned early in my tenure not to prejudice um, other investigations that need to be conducted as a result of our work. Uh, what we do know for certain is um, the, while emergency management I think has distinguished itself in the area of managing emergencies, in the area of managing public resources there was a total dereliction of duty. Adam, just to be clear, during the period of this audit, who was Director of Emergency Management? During the period that... Covered the, by this audit, who was the Director of Kentucky oh, Emergency uh, I'm Management? I'm sorry, that would be General uh, Hetzel. You talked about the uh, threats of retaliation against whistleblowers. Does that... Fit? Was it named by who? Was that General Hetzel itself or other? I'm sorry, repeat the question. You talked about threats of retaliation. Did that come from the director himself or other people in his administration? Both. How many employees did you reach out to? We, uh, we are careful to protect the identity uh, uh, explicitly and implicitly of the, of the folks who cooperate with our investigation, but it's safe to say that there were uh, a very large number of interviews granted, both as a both that we sought out, and frankly, a number of people inside the agency who sought us out. I need to get something clear: is it General Hetzel or General Heltzel? <laughs> General Heltzel. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. It's, uh, and that's okay. I just I just uh, didn't want to make a mistake on that. Right. Uh, but you say here in the in the press release, as auditors were wrapping up the exam. KYEM employees informed them that the director had openly threatened retaliation upon learning who talked to the auditor staff. Uh, was can you elaborate on that? How sure. he did that? There was, was it, a, it, did he talk to several employees? In an open employees? meeting, in an open meeting, um, it is alleged by a number of folks who are in <coughs> close contact with our auditors uh, that uh, retaliation was threatened upon being able to read this this audit and decipher. Uh, who cooperated. Is he an employee of the governor? Is he part of the governor's administration or is he part of the National Guard? How, how is that set? No, the, the Department of Emergency Management and uh, Military Affairs serve at the pleasure of the governor. Is anybody currently within KM uh, suspended? Uh, any action taken against them? How would that process work? Well, it's a process that would be determined by uh, the leadership at emergency management. And to my knowledge, uh, there have been no, no steps taken yet. Of course, the audit was just released, although um, uh, they have been aware of this for at least a week, uh, maybe two. But the leadership of emergency management is also somebody who you seem to indicate acted inappropriately. Sure, so who would take but, but the there is a connection there between uh, a, a, a parent organization, which is military affairs, and indeed these are non-merit employees who serve at the pleasure of the governor. General Hetzel is still there as of today. Yes. Should the governor remove him? Well, John, I'm not governor. Uh, but, I, but what I would point out is that I think there is significant information here that's going to require uh, uh, that's going to require a thorough examination of our audit at the highest levels of government and decisions are going to need to be made about uh, the, the ability of leadership to continue uh, in this in critically important capacity. Uh, did you go so far as to call on the governor here to remove people from office based on your audit? Well, the governor was elected to that position and I was elected to be the taxpayer watchdog. It's uh, my responsibility to uh, uh, to gather facts as related to how well an agency meets its obligation to the taxpayers. And I think what we found here are significant issues in that area. And uh, uh, the governor's office, I'm sure, uh, will be giving uh, meaningful review to this and will be making decisions accordingly. In scanning the division's response, it seems as if they are disputing absolutely every one of the major findings of this. There was no intimidation. There was no uh, altering of records. Uh, What's your reply to that? Well, our reply is at the is at the uh, is it behind their reply, and as you know, it's uh, it's it's often a rare thing in which the auditor replies to 
uh, responses by the, by the agencies as the subject of the examination. But as you take the time to read both their responses, I think it emerges how erroneous uh, their responses are. They frankly don't hold water against the light of day. And the work of the professional career staff here in the auditor's office frankly, de frankly demolishes uh, any responses that come from that agency. I mean, the, the overarching attitude is there's nothing to see here, just move along. We have altered documents that point to the contrary. We have an email included as exhibit E or F that uh, clearly demonstrates from the hotel that the invoice is reported by the Department of Emergency Management is not indeed one that they could produce with their existing software. It's my experience that the innocent don't manufacture evidence. Are these employees specifically threatened with uh, termination or any of the rank and file employees in that agency covered by the state merit system? Well, so many of these employees, uh, because of their uh, special status in working for an agency that has so much in federal funding, are folks that serve at the pleasure of the administration who do not enjoy similar protections that those in the merit system have. But you can't fire someone for speaking to the auditor regardless of whether you're not mayor, right? That's exactly right, John, and we're here to re reiterate that message today. So, and did you see any evidence that, that phones were bugged or, uh, or anything of that nature? No, we didn't, and I think that's important to point out. But the fact that a culture was created in which so many employees thought that that could potentially be the case demonstrates the level of dysfunction in that agency. So this conference that kind of came uh, under your microscope was the Governor's Workshop Conference at the Gulf House? Well, it, 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 that's part of it. It was also the, a, it was also the uh, partnered with a national emergency preparedness conference that occurred at the same time under the same roof. And so at, at certain <coughs> times when they had entertainment, they paid for this, and, and it, specifically if, if they tell me that you know those were paid for by, by, by vendors, entertainers and stuff like that. Some were. I can speak to that. And, I, and this is what's so troubling, is that there were instances when they did precisely the right thing. For instance, the Elvis impersonators were paid for by vendors directly. Uh, but so many other things were not. And when you take private money and commingle it with public money, it necessarily becomes the taxpayer's property. If you put public, if you put private money into the state treasury, that necessarily belongs to the people of Kentucky. And to have an accounting system in which you can make no, uh, you, you can't appropriately discern about what, what area paid for what, is deeply troubling, and it's why we have to have an accounting system in place that can in separate the wheat from the chaff. Well, do you have some examples of things that were actually paid for by taxpayer money at some Sure. Time? I mean, you know, we, we list in the report door prizes, alcohol, uh, a lot of areas that we think weren't central, that are not central to the mission of, uh, of this agency. Well, so I, I, I figure you use a hundred and more than a hundred thousand dollars. Are you talking, is that all taxpayer dollars there? Tom, when you can't make an appropriate discernment between what the vendors were paid, let's, let's say that even if those expenses were allowable, um, the fees that vendors paid ostensibly to cover these kind of costs weren't sufficient to meet that cost. So what emergency management tries to make the defense, uh, which I think is a rather weak defense, is, well, all the things that you have questions about, we paid for from vendor fees. Well, that's not what the record, that's not what the accounting system, that's not what the state's own accounting software says. What, do, what, do you, what is a vendor in a situation like this? So it may be someone who, it may be someone who has uh, equipment that they want to sell to conference attendees, um, people who um, uh, do business in the emergency management space. Is it even a good idea for them to be drinking the vendor's booze then? I would think not. What about the Bell Cruise itself? Do we know how that was funded, paid for with taxpayer dollars or vendor dollars, and is that allowed? Uh, we believe it's not an allowable expense, and we believe that it was paid for with taxpayer dollars. Do you know what year that was? The 2010. Yeah. Was there alcohol provided on that cruise? I don't know that there was alcohol in the boat. There's plenty of alcohol at the conference. How much alcohol is involved here in terms of, uh, you know, was it a case of beer or was it? A, no, no, no. We're a, we're talking about a, a significant a significant enough purchase of alcohol that it had to be in the invoices that it had to be obscured. The line item had to be obscured and covered in other areas.
Is there a federal grand jury that's reviewing anything related to this or emergency management as far as you know? Not, not that I'm aware of. How about the FBI? Uh, I would never uh, speak uh, to what the federal uh, law enforcement authorities might be up to for fear of jeopardizing their investigation. Does the altered documents indicate to you that they knew what they were doing? Absolutely. Involved? Absolutely. There is no such thing as accidentally altering documents. There's no such thing as taking the uh, headline of a, of, a, um, uh, of a business and then creating your own accountability system and plugging it in there and representing it as if it was an official document. It was not. I mean, we, they're literally caught red-handed here. And we have an exhibit E or F in here, the email uh, from, the, uh, uh, from the Gold House that says, we, we couldn't produce this document, our software doesn't allow it, everything from the font to the alignment to the spacing is out of order, which means it was manufactured somewhere. And I have a hard time believing that an um, that a, that a invoice um, fell from the sky in that working order. And I'd also point out, that in that exhibit from the hotel, they point out that the $67,000 number is meaningless and they don't, they don't have any clue what it represents. So you painted a picture of systemic issues within this agency, particularly with these conferences. Do you have any evidence that it would be outside of, of these conferences, maybe in their regular duties? Sure. Uh, you know, that's a, that's a very good question. And there have been what we call material issues flagged uh, with this agency, uh, including my predecessor's work beginning in 2008. So what we have here is a habitual lack of attention to detail that is required to ensure the proper oversight of taxpayer resources. And what I would submit to you is that this agency has ignored those red flags since 2008. And what happened with these conferences is the crows came home to roost. Um, I think what we have here is a culture where these guys are admittedly pretty good at their job, uh, but they use that as license to forget the obligation they have more broadly to the taxpayers to be effective stewards of, uh, of the resources that, is, frankly, a poor state has to invest in them. Can you point to any instances where money was inappropriately used and somebody in the public was not served adequately? I can't. I can't. Um, our, our focus has been on the internal management and financial operation of this agency, but I'm certain as a result of this, we'll find uh, some uh, we'll find some disaffected constituents. You talked about red flags. Was there any evidence that you all found that there was behavior like this happening before 2010? Sure. The audits from 2000 from 2008 on uh, have reflected a criticism of the culture have reflected a criticism of the what we believe was a slapdash approach uh, to financial management. These are not new concerns, they're merely the most egregious. And it's one of the things that I think is so important for the taxpayer watchdog to communicate and for people who are being audited annually to understand is that if you fail to respond to the audits, if you fail to put in place those mechanisms which are designed to provide the proper uh, stewardship of public resources, these things gradually get worse. And I think this is the, uh, we reached the tipping point. And uh, I think it's uh, disappointing that the leadership of emergency management, indeed military affairs, have ignored or tried to um, obscure the findings of this office, not just in the life of my administration, but in the life of my predecessors. Does this Adam, before you became auditor, this is federal funding. one more time, go ahead, Adam. Before you became auditor, you were the governor's chief of staff. Were you aware of any of this at that point? <clears throat> no, I wasn't. And Roger, I worked a great deal uh, with this agency um, in the number of, of uh, you know, from straight line winds and hurricanes to to power outages and. Uh, ice storms. Uh, I worked hand in glove with these folks in my, capa my capacity as chief of staff. And frankly, I'm, I'm wildly surprised uh, to have uncovered uh, this, kind of, uh, this kind of lack of attention to uh, detail in regards to financial stewardship. It's very disappointing. Were all three of these workshops at the Galt House? 10, I 11, and yeah, 12. all three were at the Galt House, 10, 11, and 12. What was the Frankfurt Hotel involved? The Frankfurt Hotel involved Plaza. the Capitol Plaza. And I, wanna, I want to, uh, you know, Tom, to give an example of the degree to which um, the erroneous nature of the disagreements that the, the, uh, the agency 
makes in response to our findings. For instance, the one about the prohibition of working lunches. For instance, I have 140 people about who work in the auditor's office. Half of them work in the field outside around the state. Now, when we have our annual meeting, when we have our quarterly meetings and we bring the folks in for training or discussion about issues that we're encountering in the field, uh, they either have to buy their own lunch or we, they have, or we have to have a potluck. That's the law. Now, in the, in the response to the finding by the agency, which is erroneous beyond measure, they cite ProCard policy, the policy for the state use of credit card to justify how they bought these lunches. Not once did they use a pro card in purchasing these lunches. So you can't look at the state regulatory code of good behavior and pick and choose those things that uh, apply to you. And if you do try to pick and choose, you at least ought to use something that's relevant to the expenses you've had, which they did not do in this case. Were there alcohol purchases at these work lunches? I don't believe there were alcohol purchases at the work lunches, no. How big a deal would this audit be if there what uh, if they hadn't if you didn't have the findings about intimidation and record destruction? It would still be a big deal, Tom. Um, this is this is an extraordinarily important agency populated by people who, just like everybody else in state government, aren't getting meaningful raises, if any raises at all, are being asked to do more with less in the face of uh, human and natural tragedy in Kentucky. And any dollar uh, that is, any dollar that goes to an area in this critical uh, agency that doesn't go to affect its mission, in my view, is one that's misspent. And while there certainly are uh, federal requirements that these conferences and workshops be held, uh, I think it's important for all of us in state government to keep our eye on the ball. And my view here is that the eye was taken off the ball and that liberties were taken because they felt that they were earned by the successes that this agency's had in dealing with natural disasters. But all of us who work in state government, or in, indeed any area of government, have a dual obligation. The first is to the mission. Uh, the second is to the taxpayers who pay the freight for us to achieve that mission. But Tom, beyond that, are you know, you know, is, is uh, misrepresenting and constructing documents a big deal? You bet it's a big deal. Is intimidation a big deal? Absolutely. Uh, I think we've seen time and time again in Kentucky uh, what happens when uh, our employees aren't empowered to blow the whistle on bad behavior. I want to follow up real quick on, on a question John asked. Uh, yeah. Is FEMA or the U.S. Army or any federal agency other than the FBI uh, conducting an exam because of what I believe that there will be a number of federal agencies who, uh, who review the findings of this work and who make decisions uh, accordingly going forward about uh, this agency based on the work provided here.